Hey everyone, Cherise here and I'm back with my March Plan With Me video. I promised myself to do a simpler bullet journal setup and a shorter Plan With Me video this month, but it's a long one again and I won't be sorry for it. <laughs> I got carried away so I guess we should start already. Watercolors are back in use again for my illustrations and I will be using this uh, watercolors from Royal Talents and these two brushes, a number 6 round brush that came with the watercolor set and a detail brush since we're gonna be painting a lot of small elements. But you can also use any of your favorite coloring supplies if you would like to recreate some of these spreads. I started by picking up the colors I'd like to use. My theme for March is home decor with lots of house plants. So I primarily be using a lot of greens and I also have brown, pinkish red, blue, and warm gray. Choosing your color palette can be great to keep everything cohesive but you can also play around with other colors you would like and I will be mixing other shades too along the setup. So for my cover page, or cover pages rather, I decided to paint an arch shelf with several home decor items and as you have seen earlier, I skipped a blank page since I wanted to add a little interactive aspect to this. Then I started by painting the decor items such as picture frames, small house plants or succulents, vases and books, but you can also find other home decor inspiration that you can include in here. I already have my sketch beforehand and the only main thing that I focused on my pencil drawing was the shape of the arch shelf with four layers. Then I just freely picked the items I like to place inside so there is no rule with what and what not to put and I'm sure you can find tons of decor ideas on Google or by just looking at the pieces you have at home. When using watercolors, I feel like I always spend so much time since I like to build up the elements with several layers so I had to speed things up a little bit but as you can see, this is the base layer where we're just painting the basic shapes of the items with lighter shades of the colors I have on my palette and just mix and matching them. I was looking back at my past themes and I just noticed how much they speak how quiet of a person I am. <laughs> Which is true also if I'm around new people and I also like a lot of alone time. There were a few themes maybe where I tried something outgoing but they didn't turn out to be very me. I do have a loud mind that gets built when I'm already comfortable with a person and even though I'm here on YouTube talking a lot now, I guess I just got comfortable with it as I went on but it was really terrifying at first. But art-wise, I'm already starting to see my style because funnily enough, I always say I don't know what my style is. I guess creating more pieces helped me realize that. There are some illustrations or paintings that I wanted to make in my bullet journal setups but I just end up doing them in a different place like my sketchbook and I do also realize that I don't necessarily have to create a setup that is in my art style all the time, especially if I'd like to explore more, making one setup unique to the other, or to simplify if I want to for convenience. The latter is still to be implemented because I wanted to for this month, but obviously it didn't happen so I'll just try it again next month. After I'm done with the items, I moved on to the background of the shelf using a mix of light oxide red, indigo, white, and a bit of Van Dyke brown to mute the color. 
You can also use other color combinations even with the primary ones. The whole art shelf is like a recessed type of wall shelf, meaning it is built in the wall. The color of the wall here is white, but I'm using warm gray to paint the insides of the arch since that will not be totally white in this perspective and the insides of the shelves as well. But I'm leaving the white spaces on the front side. At this point, I can now add dimension to the arch by using a darker tone of the gray color that I used and I'm mainly painting the inner side of the shelves and the corners of the wall, making the edges a bit more sharper. Then we're gonna go back to the decor again and paint the shadows and details using darker shades of the colors as well. This step always makes the whole painting come to life. It's the icing on top of the cake as they say. I also think it's easier to work on a small painting like this since it doesn't require a lot of water which dries quicker on the paper. So if you would like to practice watercolors, I am confident that you can paint this too. Alright, when I'm done with the decor, I finished this painting off with more shadows on the pink background just behind each element to make them pop a little bit more. But that is it for this page painting and I really like how it looks. Now let's get back to the page we skipped before and I'm going to cut the same arch shape out. Then I'm painting a subtle wash of light green and a bit of gray around the cutout. Okay, now we have two walls, the other one is white and a light green. <laughs> I almost forgot to say that I actually have a different theme in mind, but like always, I changed my mind. I was planning to do something like a window type of design, but I'm really happy I went with this instead. But one thing that is still in common is there has to be house plants or just plants in general and I think I have made it as a tradition for March since all of my themes in my previous March bullet journal setups has always had plants. But speaking of house plants, we are painting a bigger indoor plant on the floor to the bottom left that has long leaves, more like a bird of paradise kind of plant. It is nice to paint the leaves that are pointing toward different directions. Some are bent or a bit curled, pointing upwards and sideways, as well as varied heights. I painted the pot all the way to the edge of the page with brown and added the shadows on the inside and more on the left of the exterior. 
When it comes to painting the leaves, I've pretty much retained the same style that I usually do when using watercolors where I just add the shadows on the inner part of the leaf that is near the stem and then blend towards the pointy end of it. But for a leaf that is showing the back side, if you look at the bent leaf on the left, I just painted it with even darker tone to emphasize it. Then on the upper right of the page will be a hanging plant. Now for this one, I tried a different technique where I'm using different shades of green separately and not like blending them on every single leaf. So I started with the lightest green to paint several leaves but also leaving some spaces in between where I can paint the middle and darkest tones. At first, I was really confused with what I was doing. I literally asked myself that, but I guess it's just really trusting the process. It got better when I started outlining the midrib or the line in the center of the leaves, and I just painted some more shadows on the upper parts it's really easy to judge your painting when you're looking at it closely, but when you take a step back or zoom it out, it actually looks good. Okay, now to complete this cover is of course a monthly title. I went for the classic Times New Roman font in italicized style using a black Tombow Fudinoski brush pen. I will be combining this spread with my monthly calendar. I opted for something simple and minimal. And I'm adding a couple of tiny decor, a plant, and a frame on top. On the frame itself, I'm simply writing 03 and below the calendar will be a space to write the important events and I chose to write it in this mono line cursive font. And that's pretty much it for my cover spread. I really hope you like it. Before we move on to the next spread, let's flip through the other side of the arch cutout. I painted the gray outline around it likewise. I want to make use of the spaces here too for some notes and then under the painting to the right is for a verse from the scripture. I am currently reading the book of Acts and I wanted to include this 28th verse from chapter 17 saying, For in him we live and move and have our being. Alright, moving on finally to the next spread, we will be doing another illustration here on the left side. I am painting this thick yellow border. I wanted to use a colored paper, but since I'm painting a Monstera plant on top of it, I just painted it with watercolors. I don't know if it's just me, but I noticed a little change with Notebook Therapy's paper too. 
I feel like it's a little bit smoother now and have a bit of coat because I'm not getting the usual way it absorbs watercolor. I don't know. If you're using notebook therapy, let me know if you have the same thoughts or experience. A Monstera leaf resembles a heart shape. It also has some holes and spaces in between. You don't need to worry about making them symmetrical, but having some variation will make it look more natural and interesting. But this painting of course is not aiming for realistic illustration by any means. So I have 5 Monstera leaves here. I painted them the same way and I darkened the middle areas mostly which was actually a bit too much where I could have left a lighter line on the center but that's okay. I also painted some darker outlines to the holes and edges. And lastly is adding the shadows using a darker shade of yellow underneath the leaves that are on the yellow side and gray on the white side. After the monastery illustration is done, it's time to write the title for this page which is my monthly plans. Having this kind of spread has been helpful to write down things that I like to prioritize and achieve over the course of the month. So this page will consist of my focus and goals. I'm using these highlighters to draw the background for my subheadings and to draw an imperfect grid pattern on the focus section just for a bit of texture. And then numbering my goals section using the black brush pen again just to highlight my top 3 goals for the month. On the page next to it will be a small wall decor illustration. I am painting two of these floating wooden hexagon shelves with little house plants inside. I am also painting a tall brown vase with long thin leaves and a small ceramic accessory on top of the shelf to the right. In the same manner, I painted these with their basic shapes first and then added more dimension using darker shades. Afterwards, I also painted the shadows on the hanging leaves. Since I have implemented a devotional habit and spending more quiet times lately, I've been reading and studying the scripture the best I can and it's not always easy, but ever since I decided to make it a part of my organization system, my daily life, and I can't literally explain it but it's certainly good. I do have the physical Bible as well as a mobile app called YouVersion where there are other translations to refer to and compare with. There are also reading plans for various topics that I'd like to dive in such as for encouragement, humility, purpose, leadership, and so on. As well as some feelings, for instance, when I need something to read for love patience, healing, and also for when I'm struggling with anxiety, doubt, stress, and more. 
I entitled this page as Into the Word and I chose this topic by Gretchen Saffles called Becoming a Well-Watered Woman in a Parched World. It's a 7-day plan. Each day will be given several helpful verses to meditate on. Although it's online, writing them is beneficial too, so I'm really looking forward to starting this plan. And that is it for this monthly planning spread. Let's move on again to set up the following. I'm adding some of these craft paper on the top and bottom of the spread. I cut these from a leftover and just connected them on the center. On the left page will be for my habit tracker. It won't be an interactive one this time. I'm happy receiving your nice compliments about it by the way, and it's actually fun filling them in. But going back with the basics is always a good idea. I will be tracking four habits, and I just used the highlighters for the background of the habit titles and black pen for the mini calendars. And it's time to paint another illustration. I am painting this four-layer wooden plant rack. If you need to track more habits using this design, you can also add them here and maybe just paint one to two layers of this plant rack for the illustration. It's nice to have multiple trackers, but I've been only consistent with tracking my habits. But this could be a creative mood tracker too, where you can color the plants, pots, ceramics, and anything displayed individually. You will just need to add more items to total the days of the month. How it looks would be something you'll look forward to by the end of the month, along with, of course, analyzing your moods. I will be going on a trip in April because my husband is finally coming home for vacation so I wanted to include a simple packing list on the right side of the spread. I am also looking forward to traveling in this time of the year because the weather is somehow favorable instead of going in summer. We went on summer last year and I'm just not really a fan of this dry season. And this time, I just want to pack light because I'm traveling with my toddler. So I have three bigger sections here for my packing list for our clothes, toiletries, carry-on, and a small box for some extras. I'm adding these washi tapes on top, but I later on decided to remove them because they didn't look good in my eyes, but I added these polka dot stickers beside the titles. And that finishes this whole habit trackers and spring break packing list spread. Now we're going to set up my weekly spreads. But let's make one last painting for March 
and I decided to use a separate watercolor paper for it. I am using a 200 GSM cold press Fabriano watercolor paper. I happen to have this leftover paper as well and the size is almost perfect for the illustration that I want to paint. But I've set aside my notebook and taped the watercolor paper on the table using a washi tape. Then I'm going to paint a crisscross wooden panel with potted plants. It's great for wall accents and when I was browsing through some ideas, I immediately thought of painting this for my weekly spreads. I measured the crisscross pattern beforehand by placing it on top of the page of my notebook and using the dot grid as my guide. The distance of each cross is 8 dot spaces vertically and I think 5 to 6 spaces horizontally. It took me quite some time to get my desired look but the steps will be easier since there are repeated elements in this illustration such as the wood pattern and the pots. I started by painting the background or the wall with warm gray. I was planning to paint this pattern on the entire paper but I decided to add the floor using a dark gray color, a carpet with light oxide red, and a table with bigger plant on the center and some more decor that I will paint later on. The pots and a clock on the center of the panel are painted with a beige tone and after that I started painting the small plants in various kinds as well as the bigger plant that is similar to the cover page. Now I also painted the table with a maple, wood color, a blue book, and ceramic pieces. Then I'm painting the wooden panel itself lastly. I can't say much about this next step which is adding more shadows and details because I'm pretty much just doing the same technique as the previous paintings in this setup by using darker shades and I really hope you got the idea. But when I'm all done with the paint, I added the finishing touches by drawing the holder of the pots on the panel and the hours and hands of the clock. Now that's my weekly spread illustration done. Let's remove the washi tapes, then I'm gonna cut the white spaces on the top, bottom, and left side of the painting. Now we have this right side remaining and I'm gonna fold this area. I'm using a palette knife to help me create a straight crease. I then cut out the edges of a couple pages about a centimeter and I'm rounding the corners of the painting as well to match the page before attaching it. I'm using a double sided tape to make it stick to the surface nicely. I really like coming up with this idea because I was planning to go with Dutch doors but with this added paper, you can look at the illustration anywhere on these weekly pages and not having to do individual illustrations, especially if you're someone like me who wants something visually entertaining while writing and crossing my everyday tasks. I liked my weekly layout last January where I was able to fit two weeks in one whole spread and also because this month has five weeks too so it's gonna feel like a long month for me but I still have quite a lot of things to do regardless 
to prepare for our upcoming quick out of town travel so this kind of layout will be easier for me to create for all five weeks in terms of the daily boxes i will be using the highlighters again i varied each boxes so there is lined bordered and fully colored boxes to make it a bit playful but i will be doing the first week only in this video and finish it later on the line box, I wrote the number of the week and my weekly reminder with another beautiful verse from the scripture. I love including Bible verses in my journal now, to be honest, knowing that I used to get offended by it, and you might be surprised. But if you watched my New Year 2023 vision board making video, that explains part of it. But yeah, if you're in the same journey, high five! <laughs> Anyway, this very last page is for my monthly review. I am making the layout very simple. I'm glad I was actually able to fill it out last month because I haven't been able to include it for the past several months. I divided this into three sections with open-ended questions such as grateful for, small wins, and biggest lessons. And that finally completes our March bullet journal setup and this home decor theme with many many plans. It's been a long video again but I hope you got some inspiration especially if you're in spring season and I hope you enjoyed this whole March plan with me with painting tutorials in between. I have more planning videos coming next so definitely subscribe to the channel, it's always appreciated. I wish you all an amazing month ahead and I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye everyone!